Welcome to a new episode of The Other Russian. And um, I haven't been recording in a while. I've been traveling and uh, recovering from that traveling. I uh, went with my wife to the um, Loveland. It is a electronic music festival that happened in Amsterdam. Actually, last weekend um, was August uh, shit, 12th and 13th of 2023. Amazing, amazing um, festival. Um, very kind of hmm, exciting place to be. A lot of people, great music, and a lot of electronic music. And, you know, I'm a big fan of it. So, yeah, the most interesting for me and the most kind of strange at the same time part of it was to see a lot of people who are like older, significantly older than me by like 20 or even more years and uh, enjoying themselves, listening to electronic music, dancing well you could tell being <laughs> them being on drugs and you could see people consuming it them there at the spot in a sense but i guess not all of it was illegal because if you're in amsterdam or netherlands in general and you go to a smart shop you can find a lot of interesting chemical formulas there that are being sold legally and you can even get a receipt and i mean yeah use it pretty much nobody's gonna stop you and tell you that you've acquired them in a illegal manner or that you're involved in any sort of a crime because it's done 100 uh, legal and traceable or especially if you pay with a card <laughs> But it doesn't really matter. Uh, I remember at some point in time, while still living in Russia and traveling to other countries, and I think during my first visit uh, to Netherlands back in the day, Holland, uh, in Amsterdam, I think it was the first place. So that very strange experience of feeling myself very inconveniently and thinking about whether or not I should use a card or uh, like physical cash to pay with it for it because I was paranoid about you know going back to mother Russia and continuing whatever the fuck I was doing back in the day and then, you know, get asked questions like, what were you doing in Amsterdam? And back in the day, it felt like extremely annoying. The sense of like paranoia and troublesomeness and the, the very feeling of it. But now it is completely different because, uh, so what? I mean, I'm not doing anything illegal. I'm doing whatever the fuck I'm doing. And why would anybody could give a shit about it? And then, actually, not only this, but using this against me, I'm just sitting here now and thinking like, shit, it was so stupid of me thinking this way back in my age. But then again... Probably time will pass and I'll be revisiting this exact moment in my life and thinking, shit, how stupid was I? And yeah, I mean, that happens. That's that's life. I mean, I can recall some situations from like once weeks, days ago, that I would think like, fuck. <laughs> but, you know, I did what I did. So, you know. It was my choice at some point in time to do something like that. So, yeah, I mean, the consequences should follow. That's the understanding and that's the idea of it. Of course, for some cases, it is not like this. Uh, 
Yeah, and I'm I'm actually gonna go back to I, I had a plan I had a plan to go back here, <laughs> continue where I've left off. But yeah, I just uh, need to take a tour here and talk about some of the stuff that I've been experiencing throughout the past week because it is not like a you know session with the psychologist or anything like that. It's not that I need an advice here or somebody to hear me out. It's just yeah, I mean I want to talk it all out because this is just annoying. And you know again the other Russian <laughs> guy happening here. By the way, I'm reading a really interesting book that I purchased in India when I was uh, leaving. Um, extremely great i mean sensational i'm gonna go back to it at some point in time but yeah i mean i tried to open the the uh, bank account for the legal entity that i've established in cybers for myself and my wife and i got declined from banks and payment systems and there were like contractors who were tasked to represent my interests and open the bank account on my behalf and yeah, I mean, they weren't successful. And then there were the other ones that they've advised to, you know, go with. And they kind of work with uh, what they say risk type of clients, being me, I guess. And, you know, me being transparent and all shit about my plans and what am I going to do with the bank account and with the entire legal entity that I've created. Uh, I mean, there isn't any support, let's put it this way. It is more of a kind of directional advice to not be pretty much that open. And I was like, okay, that's interesting, but why? And then they say, you know, we, we, we cannot open an account and, you know, go to the banks and they'll decline. And I was like, okay, so why? Well, they say, you know, the reasons, and I say, yeah, sure, I understand, but please could you elaborate more on those reasons and tell me what those reasons are. So, I don't remember, I don't think I've told you last time, but the idea is that when you take a, a can of soda, for instance, I don't have one next to me because I don't typically drink soda, although there is kombucha there. <laughs> By the way, kombucha is like... Zoomers reinvented uh, uh, mushroom tea, basically. But yeah, um, so the ingredients that you can find there are listed in a certain manner, going from the biggest to smallest. So if you take soda or anything, uh, ingredient number one would be water. Ingredient number two would typically be sugar. And, you know, sugar is just any type of drug pretty much, but somehow widely accepted but anyway i mean not outlawed <laughs> better yeah put it this way so there's sugar and there's um yeah and the, the ingredients so the, the reason number one out of those ingredients was your nationality and i'm like like seriously uh, i mean i do get it I understand why, but seriously, I mean, this is just insane. I need to take a sip. So yeah, going back to Himalayas, and uh, at some point in time, I will record a new episode to talk more about the Amsterdam trip because it was revelational again, and um, yeah, highlighting all the interesting things in life and there were some really good ones that made me think of aspects like climate change and by the way going back to himalayas this is like desert pretty much right but on the uh, height at the height of uh, 3500 meters above earth so yeah the green uh, life there is because of all the glaciers melting so they go down the water slips down as you can see in this manner and it goes all the way down of course not um, all mountains are like this but anyway 
point nine <laughs> in this is that in Netherlands you can feel um, the consequences of global climate change. And this is a, a quick topic here uh, about the global warming that was introduced as a concept to the world and uh, some, I don't know actually how many decades ago. But yeah, I remember Albert Gore gave a lecture, if I'm not mistaken, here on uh, global warming. And it was really impressive. I mean, those slides were killing and showing like in a proper manner um how it works and what are the consequences basically but not many people back in the day taking him seriously and you know it's hard to believe in it you know i mean global warming I know what the fuck i mean it's just been like this there were cycles back in like the history of earth and things like this ah you know it happens rarely and uh, by then there was i mean there there actually was a lot of data and it was data driven and data backed so i mean it was not a, an imagination of any type of thing like that so he made a solid point back in the day i don't remember which year but uh, i'm gonna find it probably if i'm gonna forget about it, i need to, i need to buy some notes yeah sticky notes here anyway next time so yeah i mean not many people took him seriously and there's this uh actually movie that um was made recently by netflix called don't look up like recently three or how many years ago two whatever uh so you know it gives you an idea of how absurd this situation is i mean <laughs> those are the scientists telling you that the world is burning and you're like yeah, yeah yeah sure just let us ignore it and you know enjoy our life and not think about the bad things and you know go on with our lives and, yeah just ignore it as if nothing's happening and then it fucking happens regardless of whether you want it or not especially should you choose to ignore it so it is happening in the netherlands you can feel it so i'm in marketing and there are certain things i like about marketing one of being able to convey a message using means that are more relevant, scalable, comprehensible, and um, accepted, in a sense. So if you think about the concept of global warming, I mean, it wasn't that big. Well, it, again, I may be mistaken here, of course it was, but still, <laughs> if you compare it with entirely different concepts. So uh, my view is that for people, it's hard to believe that there's this global warming and that uh, Mother Earth or planet is just, you know, doing another cycle. But not really. I mean, our planet is being fucked up and today august 19th and in vilnius it's plus 29 out of 30 degrees throughout the day and it's been like this for i don't know a week and a half or so so yeah thinking about that concept of the global warming it's hard to believe in it right i mean unless you know things like this happen but they didn't happen for this longer period of time maybe even 10 years ago or before so we're more of occasions here and there but not like this however at some point in time there was a person she or he doesn't matter but i would like to find that person and you know personally shake a hand and say thanks because that person created a concept of uh, 
global climate change. And if you think about it, the global climate change. Yeah, you can't believe in that, right? So, in my view, this is just marketing, but I mean, so in Netherlands, you can really feel the, the, the consequences, the upcoming consequences of the global warming and the global climate change. Because basically, uh, the ground, not like this, it is pretty much like this. So here are the dams that are supporting that level of sea and not letting it go here to a part where Netherlands are mainly located at. And yeah, I mean, they would be one of the first countries to face the consequences of the global climate change. So they're one of the most interested ones in reversing and reverse engineering it basically because yeah i mean it is essential it's their livelihood it depends on them i mean their livelihood depends on it so yeah and again going back to himalayas yeah there was an an, an exhibition uh, it was a photo uh, exhibition in one of the churches in downtown in Amsterdam and I got a lot of pictures I'm gonna show it to you next time so if you look at those pictures if you uh, uh you will <laughs> when you will <laughs> so you start to think more and more about the global scale of it and the problem with like adoption of the ideas by the majority is that they cannot experience it by themselves. So you cannot make 7 billion people go to Amsterdam and experience this type of feeling, I guess, understanding, comprehension, and um, kind of relation to it. I mean, a problem that you can relate to. So, yeah. It is just fucking fundamental. So, at some point in time, I started to think, like, shit, what the fuck am I doing? I mean, I <laughs> should reverse engineer uh, the um, global climate change of Mother Earth. Like, why not? Some <laughs> people tend to call me Jesus for a particular reason. I don't want to get crucified here. I'm not going to fan any type of religion. I mean, you believe whatever you believe in. I'm atheist or agnostic, probably, mainly. I don't know. Lately, they've been talking about UFOs and making their spin news today on Twitter. I don't know whether or not it's verified. Nowadays, it's hard to believe everything you see. But anyway... A news announcing um, a production company related to Steven Spielberg uh, is working on a documentary on uh, unidentified flying objects, basically, on the territory of the United States. And it is really intriguing, of course. But before we get, or after we are discovered and contacted by the aliens we still need to remember that this is by far the only planet that we all as humankind live on and the thing about yeah, making an impact is actually very basic one small thing that you do just do it as gandhi said be the change you want to see in the world so yeah i mean it could be anything and i remember 
it experiencing in that hotel that we stay with my wife there's this been problem with the drain system it, the drainage the water didn't go in a uh, shower and uh, the sink where which we used to wash hands and clean teeth and it got me thinking like fuck this is this is it i mean this is the world we live in and if we're not gonna do something about it it's gonna go down as they showed it in that movie don't look up but yeah let's uh, go back to the himalayas so there were some distant and remote areas which were affected uh by um uh, global climate change and the himalayas i bet is one of it oh, how did i oh, yeah right cool so yeah let's go back to this one and uh, go through some of those amazing pictures but still i mean remember and think about it because those areas as well are experiencing those problems they do uh, suffer from shortages of water and uh, one of the new potentially world wars happened due to the access to fresh water at this level of altitude so yeah i mean look at this our planet is dying but we can definitely do not something but anything about it just yeah whatever oh my that's that's a nice view it's very rarely the case that i uh, uh revisit photos <laughs> that i make and now i it seems it's a good opportunity because at some points in time i feel myself as one of those tourists walking around making pictures of corners <laughs> and then now i realize why <laughs> because i can use it all so yeah um there's been a moment in my life when i used to make pictures of skies and i just remembered it uh but yeah i mean those gorgeous mountains won't be available at some point in time because um yeah the planet is dying so right we definitely <laughs> yeah i'm gonna shut up don't worry i mean not nobody wants to listen to a person moaning about those things right i mean don't look up uh yeah and by the way the gravity of the oh shit well, that was a nice view there so that river could eventually die in in years to come because yeah again the, the consequences but yeah talking about the uh, power of movies and the tv shows uh i did mention previously how to change your mind and now i'm mentioning another one a movie that is um damn uh, again created produced by netflix and uh this is like a weapon of mass influence i'm telling you like they're doing their job properly so yeah look at those those were like water melting caps ice caps uh, of those seven thousand meter high mountains yeah going down all the way melting melting and with each year oh shit oh, some some effects i definitely need to master that shit but yeah i mean still gorgeous still beautiful definitely worth visiting but yeah of course for some people it may be enough to experience just this looking at those pictures because it's gorgeous actually it's not that easy to be there i told you before that I had this pain in the back of my head and the, the oxygen the, um, level of 82 and a half or 84 and a half but anyway it's hard it's tough but yeah i, I did the hard work for you so yeah well, let's call me jesus for just doing this first view of shiok river yeah i mean look at this what a view right i mean amazing shit that's beautiful yeah right oh yeah i'm i need to go soon so me and my wife we'll go to a market to buy some veggies and some fruits and we're gonna take a reusable bags with us because we don't want to create plastic more plastic and consume less of it 
how the fuck i don't know oh okay each time i tend to fuck up a smooth transition here but yeah look at those beauties again those rivers and the limited parts of the greens everything entire life of people depends on how we treat our planet because yeah in years to come you may not be able to see all this we will either find a way or make one oh okay i mean those this is the company if i remember correctly that built that road or like part of it and they have these um i don't know how you call them like street signs monuments concrete blocks or whatever along the way and you can find various types of phrases there and uh, the meanings of those phrases are mainly concentrated around areas like slow down and be mindful on the road something like that because yeah i mean that you've seen those roads you you may want to slow down there but if you want people to follow it is important to remind them about that of course but yeah i mean this is the behavioral psychology basically uh, so the third second area would be around like us being the company that is you know has built that road to kind of show off and say yeah we're the builders, we did it, we can do whatever the fuck we want. And there are, there are other signs about labor and it being important for life. And this is an interesting one because, again, depending on the context, that type of message could have been interpreted very differently. Oh, by the way, I... I don't remember if I highlighted this before, but in uh, in in India they have a lot of uh, swastikas, and those are different types of swastikas, not the ones that were used by Nazi Germany, or by Hitler and introduced by him. Different type of, however, it feels as if uh, you know he got some inspiration there, and uh, maybe some of those messages resonated or whatever but yeah um i mean look at this river it's just gorgeous some beautiful beautiful pieces of nature which can come extinct in i don't know years to come actually there were a lot of trash but not that much i'd say However, it was present, it was visible, you could have found trash everywhere. So I think you can definitely say that there are people responsible for creating additional trash and, you know, creating artificial blocks for Mother Nature. So I'm a lot of kind of believer and... Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> I forgot that I've... Uh, uh, yeah, I've just been looking at the second screen, apparently. Right, so that, that river, yeah, I mean, look at this. <laughs> and um, if, I don't really understand why would somebody want to, you know, create an additional, like, blog for Mother Nature or, you know, create some additional pollution. I'm trying to avoid doing it myself and whenever I can, I... You know, I put effort towards it and not perfect, far from it. But yeah, I'm doing it. I'm sorting garbage depending on the location that I live at. And yeah, working on it, doing my small steps, one step at a time towards, yeah, reverse engineering it. And yeah, I mean, look at those mountains. They're just gorgeous. You may want to keep uh this opportunity to enjoy them you know go there from time to time and have a ride or you know enjoy the view or something like that but for this to happen we all need to take some measures you thought i would shut up no <laughs> but yeah this is on the way to kardungla i probably yeah i think it did i mean i recorded a while ago so i'm not sure but yeah let's say i did 
say if i didn't just you can put it in, in the comments and i'll get back to it or visit or whatever respond but yeah the thing is that you go there and you can see snow and you can see like layers of uh uh, gases and actually i mean i am the one responsible for a small particle of those gases because i'm in a car which is um uh, using gasoline so i am the one creating additional contribution to the global climate change and i do recognize it it's not that i kind of have those double standards saying oh no no the others should be the ones <laughs> of course i have double standards i'm a human fucking being but yeah i mean not on this topic it seems but yeah we'll see i mean you can find me doing something shady at some point in time anyway i'm not perfect so yeah karadungla uh but yeah those people are working there please drive caref carefully and this is made out of debris of a car and uh yeah strong message right by the way uh on our on our road there yeah i didn't make a picture of it but i think it was really like close to karadungla in particular there's been a car corpse basically uh down the kind of mountain slide and yeah i mean makes you think that yeah you should definitely drive carefully here because yeah i mean easy road down you know and yeah point of no return at any turn <laughs> yes you see you know i mean i guess somebody fuck <laughs> yeah i mean you look at this and you think like this is just insane i mean look at those people they they did it why you may want to drive carefully there i don't remember if i've shown this to you we welcome you at cardungla highest motor road in the world for the locals, Kordungla is a sacred place where two heavenly gods reside. They pray and offer prayer flags to the gods. While you enjoy the pristine mountain pass, kindly do not step on the flags and refrain from smoking and drinking. Also kindly maintain silence and keep the surroundings clean. Ladakh Buddhist Lina Social. I guess something. But yeah, I mean, strong message, Wayne. I mean, you should respect places you visit and not create additional garbage or, you know, whatever. And those are the flags. So those are some peaks of, again, maybe 70 hundreds or something meters above Earth. Yeah, I mean, very, very beautiful in my view. <laughs> yeah, those were, those are the Buddhist flags. I don't know, a building or something, like a, a temple, I guess, in a sense. So, yeah, that's high. If you want to get high, <laughs> go there. So, yeah, those are some panoramic views that I made. I mean, look at this. Which is gorgeous, gorgeous mountains. I am. Yeah, and then, then yeah, further, further down, again some some beautiful mountains. I think this was Lea starting. This was some um, stupa stupa shanti. I think yeah that we visited. So Buddha is a resemblance of stupa, and you remember I told you before that the, those white stupas that represent Buddha's body. So yeah, I mean this is a Buddhist temple. Although in my view, it's still strange. I mean, he's the only ungod god <laughs> on earth. So the rest of the gods are like this divine power you know type of dudes and by the way dudes not well actually in that book <laughs> to which we'll get back to there were women many women gods before the patriarchy came to rule but yeah anyway archaeologically proven by the way 
So no conspiracy theories there. But yeah, uh, Buddha was the only person, like human being, who is being worshipped. And uh, yeah, he's not a god. He wasn't a god. And uh, the idea there is that he's just a human being. But, but, you know, coming of a rich family and then, you know, putting it all aside and uh, deciding to get rid of the sufferings sufferings are here like those are the demons that are kind of torturing human beings with desires cravings and everything similar to it and yeah there's buddha like divine dude that is in nirvana and got disconnected from those sufferings there and uh, some elements of the worshipping that is being used, but I, I, don't, I don't really understand why there is a ritual of worshipping for Buddha, because, I mean, he's just a human being, right? And he didn't want or wouldn't want to be worshipped, but hey, anyway, take off your shoes, yeah, pay respect. So those are the, I don't know, yeah, People just, again, worshipping Buddha, like that same person. But still, um, so far, if I remember correctly, talking about religion, right? <laughs> or not talking. So Buddhism is considered as a religion with the highest level of happiness for people. So there's been a, a study of people, like, level of their happiness. And there is a direct correlation between the level of happiness and uh, those people that are Buddhists. So, at least, you know, the person did uh, really create a strong positive legacy. I mean, you got respect for this at least. But yes, people still worship him for no apparent reason, right? But yeah, uh, this is life of Flair, and uh, again, just a view from uh, my uh, toilet. <laughs> By the way, I love toilet views. I just simply in Ladakh, of course, not everywhere. But, but I bet there are uh, even more beautiful ones. But this is just the toilet, and you pee, and you look at it. It's, it's, it's like... Yeah, um, again, old ver toilet version one. Toilet version 2, you know, more pristine or uh, prestigious or more premium or accessible for um, people from the Western world, let's put it this way. Yeah, some time getting closer to uh, sunset and it's getting just absolutely beautiful. Right, now I need to take a pause here because I need to go and actually run and meet my wife and then head to the market. So thank you very much for listening and watching. And I'm going to return at some point in time and continue the conversation going. Maybe finally I'll convince my wife to start the doing podcasts with me and you'll be able to see uh, that amazing human being for yourself. So thank you. Uh, be whatever you want to be. <laughs> Bye.